Good morning. Welcome to Faith. I'd like to welcome members, guests, visitors. I'd like to welcome everybody in person, everybody online. I'm so glad you all are here today with us. Thank you for joining us for worship. Today we will be doing virtual communion for those online, so if you don't have your communion elements ready, go ahead and prepare them now. Um, let me hit my fan. It's a little warm up here. All right. We are doing responses today, um, but uh, Barb is sick. She has a really bad migraine, so she came and went home. So, well, I mean, if somebody out there feels strong enough to lead us in the hymns, then we can do that. Does anybody want to volunteer to do that? <laughs> yeah? Barb Fitzpatrick will? All right. <laughs> oh, she's been voluntold. All right, so we'll try the hymns. Um, and um, the Lord loves a joyful noise. It doesn't matter what it sounds like, so it will be pleasing to the Lord's ears, no matter what. Um, I'd like to announce that the flowers today have been given by um, to the glory of God by Bill and Kathy Hallman in memory of uh, Peggy Linsky. And that is all. So let us take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. You may rise as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. This is your moment. You don't know this one? Okay, should we skip it? Okay. We appreciate music even though we can't sing it right now. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones, and your spirit brings truth to the world. Send us this spirit, transform us by your truth, and give us language to proclaim your gospel through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. Our first reading is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. 
When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Cretans and Arabs in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning." No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The psalm for the day is read responsively, and it's Psalm 104, verses 24 to 34 and 35b. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide, with its swarms too many to number, living things both small and great. There go the ships to and fro, and Leviathan, which you made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. O Lord, rejoice in all your works. You look at the earth and it trembles. You touch the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. The second reading is from Romans chapter 8, verses 22 to 27. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. You may rise as you are able. Ladies in back, do you know the tune for this? Yeah? 
Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father, and will testify on my behalf, you also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to the Spirit who sent me, Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send the Spirit to you. And when the Spirit comes, God will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, the spirit will guide you into all the truth. For the spirit will not speak on the spirit's own, but will speak whatever the spirit hears and shall declare to you the things that are to come. The Spirit will glorify me because the Spirit will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that the Spirit will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we are celebrating the first Christian Pentecost. But we have to be careful not to confuse this holiday with a few other things. Firstly, this isn't the Jewish holiday of Pentecost. The Jewish holiday of Pentecost, or the Festival of Weeks, is a celebration of the harvest, which comes 50 days after Passover. It's an annual regathering of the people. That's why they were all together in our text for today. They did their pilgrimage every year for their festival of Jewish Pentecost. The other thing today isn't is the Tower of Babel story. The Tower of Babel story is a story of a united people who were separated and spread out in the world by having been given different languages. In that story, people spoke and heard languages they didn't understand. In this story, in the first Christian Pentecost, it's the opposite. The people start speaking in different languages and people did understand what was being said. This is a story of taking a divided people people from all over, and uniting them through the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit is the main character in, today, in this week's readings. But saying that doesn't really narrow anything down for us or give us much detail, because the Holy Spirit is quite a big thing. I've heard it asked, how do you know if it's the Holy Spirit instead of just ingestion? The Holy Spirit is more than just a gut feeling. The Holy Spirit, or the paraclete, has many different roles. The paraclete is the one called to be alongside you, and is also known as the advocate, the comforter, the teacher, the helper, the guide, the assistant, the intercessor, the companion, and the agitator. She's a busy one. The Holy Spirit is the creative power that makes things possible when they otherwise would not be possible. The Holy Spirit is not a warm, cozy, comfortable thing, but a thing that is uncomfortable, difficult, and challenging. 
It pushes us out of our comfort zones and dumps us outside of our little boxes that we live in. Because the Holy Spirit is all about transformation and there can't be transformation without change. And you know how we are when it comes to change. We just love our tradition, don't we? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. This is the way we've always done it. But if we don't change, we don't grow. If we refuse to change, then we are unable to transform. If we deny the opportunity of change, we are denying the opportunity for God to work in us and through us in the Holy Spirit. A church that claims to have the Holy Spirit must be willing to follow that lead, a friend of mine recently said. Today we read about Jesus' last night with his disciples. He's telling them he's leaving, but that the Holy Spirit will be with them from here on out. They will not be alone. The people were brought together, given the Holy Spirit, and thereby validated and, infirm and affirmed in their connection to each other and to God. Even though these people were a diaspora of dispersed people, they are not alienated or adrift because they are now connected by the Holy Spirit. That's the amazing, powerful experience of the Spirit. It connects us in relationship with God and with each other. The Spirit shows up in spaces and places of loss, abandonment, questioning, wondering, in situations of isolation, deprivation, and scarcity, and brings reconnection and abundance in Christ Jesus. Pentecost is the Holy Spirit taking the church as it was and launching it in new directions. What a perfect year for this to happen, right? We are hopefully ending this difficult pandemic season in our lives and we're looking to see what the church is going to be as it comes out of this pandemic. We've been reworked and remolded during this past year and we're being released into a new world as a new version of ourselves. I posted an image this week on my Facebook page that said, nothing should go back to normal. Normal wasn't working. If we go back to the way things were, we will have lost the lesson. May we rise up and do better. And that's exactly what the Holy Spirit wants for us. The Spirit is nudging us and pushing us into new spaces and places, into uncomfortable and awkward situations, because that's where we need to be. That's what we need to do to grow. We need to embrace that unknown element. We need to look at everything in our world, everything in our church lives, and wonder, why? And what if? God's Spirit is taking things further than they've ever been before. God has greater things in store than we've ever seen before. Because God's plans are so much more than this. God's plans are so much better than what today is. Pentecost is like the birthday of the church. It's where we look back and see where we've been, and we gather the courage to move forward into something new. And just like a rite of passage, it involves discomfort and disruption. It's a threat to our comfortable sense of order that we're used to. It's something scary and unknown, and we're not sure if we've got what it takes to make it through or not. We're not sure if we can handle it. We're not sure sometimes if it's worth it to even bother. But to embrace that discomfort and disruption is to allow the Spirit to abide within us. To ask the question of what if is to allow that Spirit to work through you. To upend the status quo by growing in new directions is to embody heaven on earth. So how is the Spirit making things possible in your life right now? Look at the uncomfortable or difficult situations that have come about lately for you and ask yourself where in that situation the Holy Spirit is. How is the Spirit using that situation to grow or stretch you in new directions? How is the Spirit doing good things for you or someone else through that situation? Where is the Spirit leading you? 
And how do we even identify the Spirit? It isn't often in our lives these days that the Spirit enters in such a distinct manner as it did in today's readings. Usually a strong wind or a gale force is simply just a weather phenomenon. It can be hard to identify the Spirit. In my text study group, we tried naming what the Holy Spirit is, and we thought how much easier life would be if we just had a set of concrete rules for what it is and what it isn't. That way, we knew if something we experienced was really a God thing, or if it was just some sort of coincidental anomaly. But we determined that the more we tried to nail the Spirit down, the more we tried to define or make rules to identify the Spirit, the less it is of the Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is something unexpected. It's unplanned. It's elusive and surprising. The Spirit is in the wind, it's in a prayer, it's in our souls, it's in relationship. When an internal voice lines up with an external voice, that's the Spirit. When love is shown and grown, that's the Spirit. When reconciliation occurs, that's the Spirit. When growth has happened, that's the Spirit. When something troubles you, that's also the Holy Spirit. When something makes you uncomfortable, when something pushes you outside of your box, that's also the Holy Spirit. And it's our job to listen to those nudges and to investigate them. It's our job to pay attention to those nudges because that's Jesus Christ at work in our lives through the Holy Spirit. That's God telling us where and what we should investigate next. That's what direction we are being called to grow. Because Pentecost, isn't, because Pentecost is about the Holy Spirit reaching everyone. Peter's sermon tells us today that it doesn't matter your gender or your age or your social status. The Holy Spirit comes to all of us. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So watch for that little niggling. Listen for it and pay attention to it. And thank God for it. Because along with prayer and discernment, it is telling you exactly where to go. Amen. So at this point, I'm going to stick in the children's sermon because it got missed in the bulletin. So, Maya, <laughs> I see your little ad pop up. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, I have this prop today. Let me put on my mask. So this is my prop. One of these days we're going to go a whole service without me dropping this thing. But today is not that day. So Maya and kids online, this is a fan. It's a little like personal fan. It has batteries in it, in the back, in the back, see? And then you wear it around your neck, and you turn it on, and it sucks the air in through here, and it blows it up at your face. So you can feel the wind, right, on a hot day like today? So our word for today is wind. I'm going to set this right here. And to say wind in sign language, we have two hands, and we go like this. Wind, like the wind is blowing, right? So today we're talking about the Holy Spirit. You guys are so patient. Today we're talking about the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. The Trinity means God the parent, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Some people call it the Holy Ghost, some religions call it the Great Spirit, but it's all the same thing. In Greek, the word for spirit is pneuma. It's the same as the word for wind or breath. 
In the beginning of the Bible, when God created the world, the wind blew over the water. That was the Holy Spirit. When God made Adam and Eve, God blew breath into them and made them alive. God blew the Holy Spirit into them. The Holy Spirit is something that we can't see, but sometimes we can feel it, just like the way we can feel wind outside or from a fan. I used to go to church all by myself because my family was busy, and I would sit there in the pews during service, and I would have this special feeling, like something magic was happening. For me, it felt very big and very welcoming. It made me daydream about doing what my pastors were doing. It made me wonder what it would be like to meet Jesus in real life. It made me want to go out and do good things to be a better pe person and to help people. And it made me feel like the other people in the church were my, f were my family, even though I didn't really know them because I was shy. That's what the Holy Spirit sometimes feels like to me. I wonder if you have ever felt the Holy Spirit. I wonder what it feels like for you. When we feel a breeze from the wind or from a fan, we can remember the Holy Spirit. Jesus couldn't stay on earth forever, so he went up to heaven to be with God. But Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to be with us. And the Holy Spirit will always be with us no matter what. So whenever you are lonely or afraid, look for a breeze or a breath and remember that the Holy Spirit is there with you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us your Holy Spirit to work in us and to remind us that you are always with us. Please let us feel your Spirit in our lives uh, as we go through our week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's stand for the hymn of the day. God of tempest, God of whirlwind. Do we know this one? All right. You want to come up?
join together in the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Gracious God, you give the Holy Spirit to your church, filling it with many and varied gifts. In the church throughout the world, strengthen us in our visioning and dreaming, that it may discover anew the Spirit's creative work. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of life, your mighty works are too numerous to count. The earth is full of your creatures, living things both great and small. Open your hand and give them the necessities of this life. Send your fresh spirit over the face of the earth. Hear us, O God. God of the nations, at the sound of the rushing wind, people speaking different languages proclaimed and heard together your deeds of power. Fill the leaders of nations with your Holy Spirit so that they exercise your gracious will in the lives of people. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of faithfulness, you tend to the needs of your people, even the sighs of our hearts. Hear those who cry out to you in distress. Restore wholeness, restore to wholeness all who are in any need this day, especially Larry, Barb, Greta, Monica, Sonia, Phil, Karen, Dorothy and Gordon, Judy, Fred, Jim, and all family and friends listed in our prayer concerns. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of love, fill this congregation of Faith Lutheran Church with gratitude for the gifts we have received from you. Renew our ministries, heal our divisions, and open us to the needs of our neighbors. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of hope, those who have died in you raise their eternal song of praise. We give you thanks for the many gifts of your people and rejoice in the witness of your saints. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share that peace with, with one another from our seats safely. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. 
Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love, through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Lord, uh, we rise as you are able, please. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your spirit, uniting in one body people of every nation and tongue. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with the angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends who are sharing their virtual Sunday school with us, um, I mention every I had a young man say to me, well, what is that Holy Spirit thing? The dove, which is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Of course, you can't, you know, we can, and, and I, last Sunday, when I uh, listened to a sermon on Mother's Day, the pastor said, how did she do it? How did this woman stand all of those things that she had gone through? And then he talked about himself being raised as a child and that this uh, this woman just responded by being brave and strong and kept lifting her head up and being alive and full of spirit even in the midst of all of her troubles and I said you missed the first verse in your text for today if you remember that text last Sunday it was a text that focused upon Mary's announcement that she was going to have a child. And this woman was terrified. And I said, you missed the first verse in that text. It says the Holy Spirit will overwhelm you and you will again experience the power of God. What is the Holy Spirit in answer in an addition to what you have already given to us. The Holy Spirit is a comforter. And it isn't something that comes from your mind or from your heart as a human being. And that's one thing that that man wanted to know. What does this Holy Spirit, how does it get to be in me? And I said, it's a gift. We have all had the gift of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Sometimes we're more aware of it than others, but many times it rises to the occasion because God gave us a creative spirit. And it wasn't that woman wasn't strong and brave. It was that she was given the power of the Holy Spirit. And that power is given to each of us. The Holy Spirit is different than the spirits that you buy in the liquor store. It's not something that keeps you on a high. It's something that takes you through the whole of life. Of pain, suffering, frustration, times of trial. But he's also with us in times of joy and thanksgiving. If we're depressed, there's nothing within us in our mortal bodies that can lift us up and believe that we will live forever. But if we have that confidence that God will always be with us, then the Holy Spirit is something that's indwelling. It's something that God gave each of us when we were created. And I didn't mean to give any other sermon here today. <laughs> But I had to tell you that story because a lot of people don't know the meaning of those little birds up there on that tongue of flame. Because when Jesus was baptized, he was given the Holy Spirit. And John the Baptist said, you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. And that fire was given to Mary before the child was born. And that child is given Every child on this earth that is formed from the clay of the earth is given the gift of the Holy Spirit. And we just need to remember its presence always. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Are there any other announcements? 
No? Okay. I think I got everything. Um, so with that, let us continue. You may rise as you are able. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.